Well, all right, boys and girls, I am back for round two over here, working on these old school Chevys. Today's Big Red. Let me show it to you. All right, so it's got similar wheels to the one I did yesterday, which is right here. Man, that thing looks so freaking good. Um, toot toot. <laughs> It looks awesome. Um, all right, so the owner has asked me if I wanted to paint this tailgate. And the answer is, yes, I'll do it. The problem is I got to see if there was some kind of trim on this thing. Like these holes, I got to look into what was there uh from the factory there are pretty uniform holes all the way around and he kind of wants some of this waviness taken out of it so i'm gonna look into that today i gotta do some googling and see what's up with that but if you look you can see where the lights are that this thing is pretty hammered see here let's see if you can see in the door I'll go get my lights in a second oh goodness look at all that all those scratches on the window he said you didn't notice it too much until he had the windows tinted and then all of a sudden boom it looks like poo um, so not a bad paint job the paint is in pretty good shape it does have scratches and swirl marks in it um, we're gonna remedy that today I'm going to hand polish these wheels like I did the other ones. These aren't bad. I mean, he, it looks like he's semi-recently uh, polished them, but those look noticeably better if you can tell how shiny that is compared to this. Not quite the same. Um, ooh. Smells soapy in here. Actually, it smells like black ice. Oh God, it's a lot. Same thing. Super nice truck, kind of a shitty cover on the, uh, I mean, this one's better than the other one, but it's still ripped up. If he got this replaced after the detail, man, he'd be in crazy good shape. Um, wait, I don't know if this has, yeah. Move the hood pop inside after <laughs> I think it was right after uh, 67 to 72, which is that um, they, cause you know, if you watch the video on that one, which should be already up, uh, the latch is right there underneath the grill. And uh, oh, he asked me also to take a look at this grill and see if I wanted to do anything with that. Oh, that's plastic. I thought it was aluminum. Yeah, that's plastic. It's not a whole lot we could do other than paint that. This should be replaced though, because all the side trim looks great, but this looks poo. Poo poo. Poo 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 poo. Anyway, I'm not dealing with that today. I just got a few odds and ends to deal with. There you go. You can see how just generally hazy this is. Look at that wood bed. It's a great looking truck. Really nice truck. Um, super sweet suspension. Uh, all the red accents. That one has all the blue accents. Pretty cool. Um, all right, let's see if I can get this hood popped. Ooh. Ooh. Since I'm a shorty at five foot six, all right, air conditioning looks to be all brand new. This is looks like that's an LT1. Like early 90s, 350-ish, 80s, 90s. Um, so I'm gonna get in here and clean this engine bay up a little bit. It, it's not as pretty as the other one but it's got random debris everywhere and I'm just gonna tidy it up, get it cleaned up a little bit, wipe the underside of the hood down, 
This chrome seems to be in a little bit better shape, still pitted and nasty, but not horrible. So anyway, I'm gonna get it all cleaned up and really see in the door how, Let's see if I can get you. Yeah, you can really see how bad the paint is, super scratched up. Chrome's all scratched up. So, anyway. All right, I'm gonna go grab all my crap and drag it in here and then get this thing cleaned and clayed. Uh, get the wheels all prepped and ready to uh, clean those up. I'll probably do the exact same thing I did on that one yesterday as far as the order in which I did things. Um, I will knock out the engine bay first, the wheels second, fender wells, and then I'll get on the paint. I'll wash clay bar and then start polishing. So I'll bring you along along the way and uh, we'll see you shortly when I get something done. All right, real quick before I get going, I got my fancy light out again today. I wanted to show you guys with the light what the paint looks like. It's hammered <laughs> to crap. Uh, that looks like wet sanding scratches everywhere. But see how bad it is? All right, I'm on top of this thing right now. All right, I just wanna show you guys real quick. I got this engine bay all cleaned up. I scrubbed everything down. Everything's all nice and clean now. Remember there was a pool of whatever's in. Well, it's, uh, that's coolant. There was some coolant everywhere. Literally everywhere. I got it all cleaned up the best I could. Um, same as I did with the blue one over there. Uh, the owner has asked me not to use anything shiny or glossy or any kind of dressing underneath the hood here. So I got everything cleaned up pretty good. I did use my air injection to spray some uh, infinite use detail juice and some infinite purpose cleaner in here in some areas. Just random brushes. I just got everything looking pretty good. So I, I did a, a solid top side uh, detail on this engine. I also got all the gunk off of the uh, underneath of the hood there. So it's all wiped down and clean. Uh, I am going to go ahead and shut this down. You won't be seeing this engine bay again, but you can see that it is all nice and clean and good to go. So time to move on to the wheels, but look at this paint. Look at this hazy, yucky looking paint. We're going to get it done though. Okay, back at it. Uh, same situation as the blue truck yesterday. It has black overspray all over it. <sighs> I wish I knew these things before I give prices and agree to things because overspray removal is a pain in the butt and it's extra. However, I made the deal and I'm a man of my word. So here we go. Overspray removal 101. It ain't complicated. I got my trusty spray bottle of uh, the original infinite use detail juice. You just lube her down and go to town. That's it. Rub a dub dub. Decontamination hub. All right, back to work. Okay, it's about time to start on the paint. I actually went ahead and did everything to the wheels, the fender wells, the tires, everything is done with the wheels and tires, the fender wells, and the engine bay. Uh, the paint at this point, yeah, I'm about to eat my lunch, a little Gatorade protein bar. Um, everything is done so far except for the paint. So, I have the tailgate down and I did some research on these holes and there was never any, well, and you can see that these holes are way, they're not, so it's like this one's really close to this edge, this one's higher up, this one's much higher up, this one's higher up, yeah, they just, they're inconsistent, which tells me 
that they're not supposed to be there. Uh, and I've looked and looked and looked and every picture of these old trucks, there's no holes in this tailgate and there's no other trim other than the stainless steel piece on the top. So I can fix this by just welding, um, you know, welding these holes shut and then grinding them down, body working them and make them look great. The problem is that it's all wavy. And while I can most likely fix a lot of that, by the time I fill those holes, get them ground down, get them filled, get everything back flat and looking right, we still have the dilemma of matching the paint. It is chipping in lots of spots, okay? There's lots of paint missing on the tailgate. I'm gonna to recommend to this customer that we buy a new tailgate and just paint that because by the time I spend all the time fixing these holes and getting that thing flat, it's gonna be cheaper just to get a new one and then just paint it and potentially match it. So I'm gonna look into that and see where we're at with that, but it is time to go ahead and get the paint straight. Man, those tires look great. That's uh, dressed to impress, diluted 50-50, and I sprayed it in the tread, and then I wiped it all over everything, and then I made sure there was no drips, so there's no streaks or anything like that. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put everything on top of the truck or in the bed. I am gonna polish the bed out. I'm gonna polish the interior walls of the bed. Because they look nice, I got a bunch of bird, bird shit out of the bed here and I vacuumed all the leaves out. So I'm gonna polish the interior just real quick. Just, uh, I'm gonna use probably, um, well, I, I don't know what I'm gonna use because I haven't done any testing on the polishing yet. So as soon as I get some testing done, I'll let you know what I'm gonna end up using. Uh, but I'm just gonna buzz the interior I'm, I'm only gonna use one step on the inside just to shine it up a bit. Um, and then I'm gonna do two steps of correction on the outside. So, all right, let me get set up and then I'll bring you back when I can show you the 50-50 shot. All right, well, so you can see how, so if you're not familiar with inspecting paint and trying to decide what the best route is to uh, get it polished. What I like to do first is I will pull out two or three different polish options from my range and I'll also pull out a couple different pads and I'll try a few different things, different combos. Uh, usually the first or second, first or second thing I choose works really well. Um, but for these trucks, I want to preserve the clear, um, and basically we're looking to re like remove a lot of defects and enhance the gloss, but we're not looking for pure, unadulterated, 100% defect removal. What I want is none of this haze to be there, and I wanna get rid of a lot of those scratches. So, like I mentioned yesterday, I got the brand new Smart Cut, and my 15 millimeter throw DA. And if you'll notice, remember earlier when I mentioned that this thing was riddled but with black overspray? Well, I clayed and clayed and clayed until it just wasn't coming off with the clay bar as, well, as much as it was at the beginning. And I just kind of stopped. Well, you can see that a lot of that black now is on my pad. So I'm going to have to clean pads more often, which is no problem. But so we've gone from this to this. Is it perfect? Nope. Do I care? Not even a little bit because the dramatic difference is what matters. Um, if I had used Dr. Jekyll, 
It cuts almost as much as this, not quite as much, uh, but it would be filling more than this is. So this isn't filling at all. Um, my polishes are water-based, so there's not a whole lot that gets left behind. But just looking at it from this angle, you can really see. And that's just with the, I haven't finished it yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna polish this whole thing with smart finish as soon as I'm done with the uh, smart, the new smart cut. But uh, this is for 2024. This cuts more and finishes better than the current smart cut. But this thing's pretty hammered. It doesn't look like it's ever really been polished before. Um, I'm talking about after it was painted. There's still some sanding marks in the door, which I showed you earlier. But I'm very happy with the turnout. So I'm just going to keep on rocking and rolling with this. And I'll talk to you guys in just a bit. All right, I'm just down here doing a little bit of work. Um, still at it with the brand new Smart Cut. You can see all the haze and the nastiness over here. Let me bring my fancy light over. Look at this. How nasty it is over here. You can see where the light is. It's just hazy, but look, pull you past this 50-50 shot. You got clarity. Much better. All right, I'm all over it. Well, I'm tripping. <laughs> all right, getting back after it. Um. Yeah, I mentioned that already. The bed's done, I've done the tailgate and half of this fender here. I'm on it. <laughs> okay, so I polished the inside of the bed. I did just use the Smart Cut and it worked out pretty good. I just wanted to get some gloss back. It had some oxidation in there. Um, another thing I did is I took some Smart Finish and I hand polished all these stainless steel strips in here. So they look amazing. Whew. All right, I'm gonna polish the inside and then the outside of the tailgate and then continue working myself around the truck. I have done the roof already in the back and inside the bed. So now I'm just cranking around this big bad boy. All right, talk to you in a bit. All right. I'm almost done polishing this thing. I am basically doing one panel at a time, switching from smart cut to smart finish and just moving right along. And I just wanted to show you with my fancy new light, look how nasty this door was. Can you see all those pigtails from sanding scratches? I'm sorry, I'm trying to get you some clarity there, but. You see all the nasty? And look at this. Not nasty. <laughs> Super awesome. It's my tape line, you see that? I mean, there's your 50-50 right there. To the right, you'll see clarity. To the left, to the left you see poo-poo ka. So, that's where we're at. Get her done. I've taken lots of pigtails uh, out of this paint. You can see how nice and wet and deep it looks, but that fender had all kinds of pigtails in it, just like this door. It doesn't look like the, um, the bed has any pigtails from this. I guess they cut and buff this thing. It doesn't have any orange peel, so that's probably what happened, but they definitely left a bunch of swirls and crap in this door and this fender. I did not notice any pigtails on the rest of the truck, just that fender and this door. This door is far worse than that fender was, but they were both super bad. Anyway, you can see the difference between what I haven't done and what I have done. And so I still have to polish the other side of this door around the window there and then this full side of the bed so i'm gonna get back on it and i'll bring you back shortly all right long hard day and she's finally complete 
This thing is so badass. I've always been into two-wheel drive Chevys. Recently, with my whole camper expansion, the whole Foxy Drop Outdoors situation that I created a couple years ago, that is coming into fruition, and I'm getting more into off-road kind of thing. Working on building trailers for off-road use. My point is, I'm thinking about maybe I need a big mud truck. I don't, well, I don't want a mud truck. I want more like just a lifted off-road kind of rocks and that kind of, more like a rock crawler than a mud truck, if that makes any sense. Anyway, so this is a 1987 GMC Sierra Classic. It's beautiful. It's got an early 90s, well, it looked like an early 90s uh, LT1 in it. I do not believe that's the engine that came with the truck. I did detail the engine bay. I showed you that earlier. So with the exterior, um, I polished with my DeWalt 15 millimeter throw dual action polisher, cordless version. And uh, I used the blue, the blue Eurotech buff and shine cutting pad uh, with the brand new version of Smart Cut, which will be released uh, March 1st, 2024. And um, after that, I used the red buff and shine pad with no mechanical ability with Smart Finish to get the gloss that you see. Um, the new Smart Finish finished almost where you see it. I just hit it really lightly with Smart Finish and got it super super glossy um, after that i wiped it down wiped everything down with amplify the prep solution uh, it is in the sp uh, specialty category at detailjuice.com uh, that particular product uh, will provide up to 30 percent more dur durability and longevity to your protection products so you apply that first to prep and prime the surface then you um, can just apply your Fast 5 ceramic coating right on top, which is what I did here. All the exterior surfaces got the brand new uh, Elite Master Coat Pro Fast 5 ceramic coating. Um, so all the paint, all the marker lights, the chrome, the grill, the stainless steel mirrors, the stainless steel rails, I, po I hand polished all the stainless steel with smart finish and a microfiber towel. And then I coated everything, coated all the glass, the windshield, side windows, rear window, the roof you saw me do earlier. Uh, actually, that was uh, what I did the test spots on. I hand polished this bumper. I hand polished the tailpipes. I coated the tailpipes in the bumper. I coated the tail lights. Um, I even sprayed the coating on the stainless steel chain. I hand polished all the stainless steel with smart finish, all those uh, slats between the wood, hand polished all those. I machine polished with just the smart cut and the blue pad on the interior of the bed. So everything got polished, amplify, and then I applied all the coating inside the bed as well on all the stainless steel hardware, the tops of the rails, the slats, everything but the wood got ceramic coated. Um, this tailgate, I'm gonna recommend that we just buy a new one and paint it because all the work just doesn't make any sense. Uh, if he wants all that waviness and those holes to go away, we just buy a new one, paint it, throw it on there, good to go. Uh, as far as the wheels go, I did polish all the wheels with smart finish and my fancy little uh, drill deal. These are stained and pitted pretty bad. They really need to be lightly sanded and then uh, refined, but I'm not doing any sanding on this project. That's a level that we just aren't at on this one. Uh, I, I, we are doing a two-step correction, which is what I did. Uh, as far as the wheels go, I did polish them a lot. So we got a lot of gloss out of them. You can kind of see that wheel I did yesterday and this one, they look very similar, except for those are those are nicer. Uh, they actually have uh, less pitting, less staining, all of that. Um, 
but these look great. I cleaned the tires with IPC and then I coated them with the um, Dress to Impress, the brand new tire shine at detailjuice.com or dressing I should say. I cut it 50-50 with water and I sprayed it in the tread. Then I used a microfiber applicator to smooth it all out on everything. Make everything look nice and black. If you'll notice I wiped out all the fender wells and got that looking nice front and rear. Uh, again, same thing with the process on the wheels. After I polished them, I did also wipe them down with Amplify Prep Solution and applied Fast 5 Ceramic to the entire wheel faces all the way around. I also did the shock bodies. Uh, he asked me to do that on his uh, F250 the other day, so I just went ahead and coated the, the shock bodies just because they look really nice. Um, that's it. Two steps of correction and ceramic coating yields this absolutely amazingly gloss, glossy uh, situation. Very happy with how this turned out. Really turned out really nice. Super happy. I uh, got a lot of scratches out. I got a lot of clarity back and the gloss is just insane. All right, guys, that's it for my two-day old-school Chevy or old-school General, General Motors extravaganza because this one's a GMC and that one's a Chevy. Um, both of them turned out really well. I am very happy with how they turned out. I'm very happy with uh, what we agreed upon. I feel like everything that you detail can always be done better or more. There's always more you can do. So you really have to just figure out what level makes your wallet and your ex your customer's expect expectation happy? So once you figure that out, you put together a plan that's going to benefit the vehicle the most for whatever the budget is. And so that's what I did. Uh, we agreed on two steps of correction for both cars. We agreed on my Fast Five ceramic for both cars. We agreed on doing the engine bay details, and we agreed on polishing the wheels. Uh, for the one money. And so I did all of that. I'm very happy. They turned out great. I wish these things were in my garage. In fact, I'm jonesing for a four by four now. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you listening to the time to listen, taking the time to listen to me babble. Uh, if you need me, 813-846-4406 is my cell. I'm always here if you need me. Uh, if you need product or advice on products, check out detailjuice.com and use that cell phone number I gave you. Uh, I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos, check out my work and all of that. And if you need me, let me know. Thank you so much. Have a great day, guys.